Yo, what's up everybody? It's McNaughty back with another video. And this time we're going to be looking at round one of the Manufacturer's Cup. Group four cars around Barcelona circuit. The national layout, which basically cuts out the entire first half of the track and leaves the chicane in. So I signed with the OP team, the Nissan crew. And uh, I did a couple laps around here for practice and as you can see there I was able to get down to 1 minute 14.2 and I'm going to need every bit of that speed as you can see in this lobby we just recently gained an A plus ranking and this lobby is chock full of A plus drivers so a lot of uh, competition here as you're gonna see as we go into qualifying and 260 points up for grabs to the winner of this split all right, now, fortunately, we were able to get out of the pits. There's only one person in front of us. PSRT Star 57. And we're gonna get right on with this. Now, the only thing that's really tricky about this uh, track, or two things I should say, is this turn one here that cuts off the first half of the Grand Prix layout, and this chicane at the end. It's crucial to get a good exit here. So we're gonna take we're gonna go through a qualifying lap here. Long main straight, so if you get a good run, overtake should be possible here. Cross the start finish line, down the stretch. Now on the left side, I'm looking for the 300 meter marker. On the brakes, down the first rotation, second gear on the way out. Now we're on the uphill section, using no brake, just letting off the throttle, letting the car coast around the turn as we get to the top of the hill a short downshift to third as I actually missed the apex there back up to fourth and on the throttle this is another spot that overtakes should be possible but I'm looking for that little sign before the 100 meter sign as we break down to first up into second again drive the car as deep into this corner as you dare down to second for rotation on the throttle early, making sure not to violate track limits, looking for the black tire mark on the ground. That's the only reference I could find as we go into the chicane. Down to first rotation, second on the way out, on the power, down the main straight again, and straight through to the finish line. What's it gonna be? A 114.8, which temporarily was good enough for pole, but within a second or two, I'm easily overtaken by the rest of the field. Like I said, competition around here is tough. The second lap, I was able to improve to 114.7, but not close enough to my optimal 114.2. Uh, and by the end of the third attempt around here, I actually violate track limits, so <laughs> this lap is not going to count. So I'm 0.321 off the leader, and uh, when it's all said and done, I'm actually going to be in P7. Now, this is really interesting that the top four qualifiers are in 650Ss. The McLaren is strong around here, it seems, or at least it is in this split. So it's looking like it's actually fairly balanced between several of the manufacturers. Again, look at this, P12 currently is 0.8 off of the leader and pole position is a 114.4 so I know that if I run my uh, my best my best lap I could have gotten pole here All right, here we go. 
Starting P7 in a field of 16 A plus rated drivers. Now, one thing that I found out recently from Talon and some of the others in, in uh, chat from our live stream is see, see those numbers that are assigned to each car. This one right here is number 11, followed by number 5. That's actually your rank in terms of DR in the lobby. And that's actually pretty significant. As you can see, as my car comes up, I am 14th ranked, and Varial behind us is 16th ranked, but starting P8. So the DR exchange is actually relatively simple. If you finish above your position, meaning if I finish above 14th, the likelihood of my DR going up is significant, assuming that the people behind me have a higher ranking. So, so again, if I finish P14 and the people behind me are cars number one and two, then my DR will still go up. So keep that in mind when you're in these lobbies. All right, so we're gonna get started here. Down the main straight. Now I got distracted by those airplanes above before. Uh, when I was practicing, so I gotta make sure not to repeat that as we go into turn one. And it looks like everybody seems to be okay coming out of that turn. The, the field is pretty bunched up still. So, what, another thing around here is that a pit stop is required, but you don't need to change the tires. So you could pit on lap one, you could pit on lap 22, but you just need to go through the pits. Coming into the hairpin, we're on the brakes. Just avoid burial behind us. And there's actually a little bit of incidental contact. I think I didn't see him on the outside, but neither one of us is worse for wear. Uh, but the field is still bunched up, and it looks like KJE out in front is uh, has a little bit of a gap. Uh, but as we come into the chicane, I'm forced to be a little bit patient here with Gummy, and I decide I'm going into the pits now. I'm getting my pit stop done now, so I can hopefully come out with a little bit of uh, clean air and run my own race. It's very big here, choosing when you're going to do your pit stop. You don't want to be in traffic, because that generally slows everyone down. And uh, you don't want to pit with too many others, because then you'll be battling coming out of the pits. So like I said, uh, it's pretty much just a stop and go drive through. So as we come out of the pits, there's not anyone in front of us, but uh, Rusty Maggots and Jose, the Brazilian driver in P P15, uh, they are behind us, so hopefully we can hold them off. Now, the tires aren't super cold, but they were motionless for a short period, period there. And I think that that affected me because immediately on my outlap, I go wide onto the back straight, and that's going to earn me a half second penalty, unfortunately, which I'm going to have to serve on the first lap out of the pits. So I'm sure that Rusty sees that. So I'm sure he's going to be on the offensive now going into the chicane. And I just got to make sure that I don't get too overwhelmed by the pressure. He's going to be able to get the overtake done. There's no sense in fighting it. I just got to run my own race. Now, I see that it's still early in the race. It's still early in the race. And uh, by the time we get to the end of lap four, uh, I realize that overtaking isn't really uh, a priority right now. Uh, so I decide that I'm going to work with Rusty. So gonna get a little bit he's gonna get a little bit of a bump draft from me uh, we have clean air in front no sense in fighting right now we want to catch up to the rest of the pack so that way we can get overtakes done as they uh, do their pit stops but that little bump draft maneuver and me backing off before turn one actually gave him a little bit of a gap uh, to the point where I'm almost out of slipstream range so now it becomes a situation where I have to catch up just to be able to work with him. Now by the time we get to lap 9, you can see here on the right hand side that we're setting 116s, 115, 115, 115. Uh, and that's not exactly lighting the world on fire 
with our pace, as you can see, the uh, fastest lap is a 114.3 just set by the Argentinian racer. So at this point, going into lap 10, I'm like, okay, maybe I should try and get the overtake done and see what uh, my pace is capable of if I'm out in front instead of in the uh, turbulent air. But you're gonna find out overtaking in even in the same car is not as easy as it's not as easy as you might think. And I don't believe that Rusty is too keen on letting me by. So into the chicane again. And unfortunately I don't get a great exit. And that exit is key. That exit is so key. If you don't get a good exit there, you're not gonna be able to do an overtake. Fast forwarding here to lap 13. This time I'm right on his bumper and I actually touch him. Coming out of this chicane, I'm three tenths behind. Now, I'm firmly in the slipstream. And if you're not right on the guy's bumper, you're not getting that overtake done on the main street. So going into turn one, try to get a little bit more rotation at first. End of lap 14, now I'm right on his bumper. This is as close as I've been. I don't know how many laps it's been, but I've been right behind Rusty. And this time, I gotta get the overtake done. Into the, into turn one, I'm on the inside, so I should have an advantage as Varial comes out of the pits. Now this is how much time we've lost. Being behind Rusty with PDX starting behind us in eighth, as uh, there's a little bit of contact and he gets the position back, it, it cost us. Uh, Vario was actually able to accomplish an overcut by a large margin. So again, going into the hairpin here, late on the brakes, down to first, parking on the apex, get in the second, accelerate away, and I think that's overtake done. Now there's only one more set of turns that I need to be wary of, and that's this chicane right here. So if I get a good exit out of the chicane, chances are that he won't be able to get an overtake done. Into second, decent. He gets a little loose on the exit. We're about half a second ahead, and I know that that's not enough to catch up along the main straight. So overtake done. And uh, we're just gonna try and catch up with Varial, get our P7 back. And you can see in the rearview mirror, the Argentinian who set the fastest lap of the race is currently battling with Rusty. So we gotta try and use that to our advantage and uh, make a run for it essentially. And hope that Rusty can hold him off for as long as possible. By the time we get into lap 17, you can see that the battle is becoming so intense that Rusty actually misses his breaking point and it goes flying off. <laughs> so that overtake is done and by the time we get into lap 18, this Argentinian racer is on our tail and <laughs> the little bit of contact, I think he might have been a little bit too aggressive here, uh, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Uh, that kind of threw us off and he bumps us again. Uh, so I'm, I'm struggling to keep the car under control because uh, just as in uh, the previous uh, Nations Cup round four race, I believe, in group two, in group two hours, uh, the pedals set has been uh, warped. <laughs> so I am fighting a brake pedal that is basically long. And that's going to compromise my lap time here as we get bumped again going into the chicane. Uh, he's really eager to get by and he does not want to wait until the main straight. I'm not sure why that is, but uh, eventually, <laughs> let's just say I, I guess I cracked under pressure and I got myself another half second penalty. So now along the main straight, I'm not going to fight because I'm going to have to serve this penalty anyway. So it really just becomes about can I catch up after I serve the penalty? Can I stay as close to him as possible? But 
and he has the inside going into turn one. And it's like immediately, as soon as, as soon as he's in front, he realizes that uh, <laughs> clearing the air uh, makes you go a little bit slower. So I'm going to serve the penalty, going down the main street, fighting the long brake pedal. And I have two seconds to make up. But we get a little bit of a break here as he goes off on the back straight. And that's going to earn him a half second penalty that I find out about right now. So I thought that this race was over and I was going to finish P9. But now it's on. The battle's still on. Time to push. Try to get as close as possible. Now we're, th we're within a second and a half. Down from two seconds just, pre uh, just previously. With three laps to go after this one. Into the chicane. Down to first for the rotation again. Out of the chicane. Now we are 1.1 seconds behind. So not quite enough to get an overtake done on the main straight. But we're going to make some inroads here. So I had a penalty. He has a penalty. Now I'm in the slipstream. Gaining, gaining, gaining. Less than three tenths behind. Now it's a battle for these last three laps. Can I get one more overtake done? Can we get the P1 in the Nissan? P8 overall. One lap to go and he goes off again. This time we're in the slipstream. And he gets another half second penalty. Unbelievable. Unbelievably bad fortunes on him. Unbelievably great fortunes for me. Pretty much the fastest man on track. Has another half second penalty. And we're going to try and stay as close as humanly possible to him. Because I don't want to miss out on this opportunity. Into the final chicane. And I actually hit him. <laughs> so I, I wait. Because that's a sportsmanlike thing to do. Let him go. Tuck right back in. And actually, the real deal is in the pit. So this is now a battle for P7. He takes his penalty. I move back over to the racing line to try and keep him out of the slipstream. Into turn one. And now it's just a question of can I def uh, defend? And as we go into the final chicane, defense completed. No track limits penalties. Bringing it home, P7. Started P7, finished P7 with a lot of drama in between. And we brought it home. Seventh place, 195 points, and a good way to end my first ever Manufacturer's Cup in an A-plus lobby. So that's going to end the video. If you liked what you saw, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Join the Discord. Do all the things. I'll see you next time. I'm McNaughty, and I'm out of here. Be well.